I am very, very pleased to introduce Dr. Enrique Villalobos, who is a pain medicine fellow uh, currently working with us. And he will be giving us a wonderful presentation on all things pain reading and what to know about this awesome topic. Thank you very much. Take it away, Dr. Villalobos. All right, thanks for that nice introduction. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is enjoying the nice weather, even though I cannot see you. I hope you are safe at home or wherever you're at. Uh, I am Dr. Enrique, or Dr. Villalobos. Patients call me either way. And I will be presenting this topic uh, that I find interesting, that I titled Pain Rating, a Subjective Measure. It's possible that you have been asked about your pain score or measurement at some point by a physician, a health professional, or even a family member. Well, I am aware this is a difficult measure, a question, and it's difficult to isolate it with a single number. Given that it's so complex, I think I find interesting this topic. This lecture is intended to help with a couple goals. First, to give you insight as to how medical professionals look at pain and the way it affects your life. Also, it's to educate you on the ways the different dimensions of pain contribute to its to your life, to your experience. And it may even spark interest for you to recalibrate your pain measurement rating. I must say that I have no disclosures, no commercial interest. And we will have like 10 to 15 minutes for further questions. Even though I would love to meet all of you, I will just introduce myself very briefly. I completed my medical education at Ponce School of Medicine, a school that has been graduating students since 1981. And then I pursued a specialization in emergency medicine. Most of the pain doctors that you have might, met, might have met in the past are from anesthesiology background or PMNR, but I did emergency medicine, which provides me with a different set of experience. I practiced for over nine years in multiple areas in the US. And now I'm halfway my pain fellowship. Uh, before getting into the details of pain medicine, we need to understand the history of the word, the meaning. It goes back all the way into the 13th century, Boina which also meant punishment or penalty. And then it was incorporated by the French, defined it as calling it pain, pain, which was more of a sadness due to, or a difficulty or an experience. And then it became pain, the middle English language. And here in this slide, you may see uh, various synonyms of pain. And if, if you can see the, Pain synonyms are very emotional. You have suffering, agony, distress, anguish. And then it's also important to point out how the American Sign Language expressed the word pain. And this figure, I, it's by two pointing crushing fingers. And the way how they describe the pain, if it's very intense, they even add a twisting motion or grimace or gestures, facial expression to convey what they're trying to say. So as we can see the history of the word, poena, pain, pain by different uh, societies in the last centuries, we can see that the, the word has been redefined multiple times. However, currently, the International Association of Study of Pain, which involves scholars, pain doctors, all sorts of, of professionals, they've defined the word pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience 
associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Important here to note the history of the word and the current definition. A thought to keep is just like words change. The meaning of, of, of the word, the meaning of pain, how we feel, it's gonna change. And maybe this definition will be different in a century or two, but currently this is the best definition we have. So now to proceed and dig in more into the evaluation of what pain is since we, we defined it already, it's important to, to take a look at this measurement, which you have probably seen, you have probably been asked how your pain is from zero to 10, 10 being the worst. Maybe the professional was in a rush, was asking you how your pain was. On the figure below, there's a visual analog scale, which is just a measurement. Usually it's for research purposes, but I want you to pay attention at this time to the figure above. As you can see, it's a rating between zero and 10. Five is moderate pain. Otherwise, it's just a very vague description. It is difficult for patients to, to put a number to that pain that they are having. It's not simple. And that's why we're gonna talk more about this topic. As an emergency physician and now a pain physician, I have seen many clinical presentations. Among them, acute pain. In this instance, a patient experiencing sharp, acute, sudden pain. And the first thing I see is an X-ray. Sometimes emergency departments can be very busy. And we have physician assistants or other doctors or other trainees helping us. And the first thing I sometimes I see is the X-ray. And they come to me for the guidance. By looking at this X-ray, unfortunately, I cannot know if the intensity of the pain is a 10 out of 10. I cannot know if it's a two or a three. I need to evaluate the patient. It's not as simple. Just by looking at this X-ray, this is a wrist and it has a complete comminuted, in other words, very complex fracture of the wrist. As we age, our bones become less robust than in our twenties and they are less flexible than during childhood and fractures are quite common just because of a simple ground fall. In these clinical scenarios, aligning the bones requires X-ray guidance and a diverse pain management approach. Some patients may require just a distraction technique and others may require local anesthetics or sometimes they all need systemic medications, intravenous analgesics and others will need complete sedation. I will not, not know the answer unless I see, talk to the patient, explain what's going on and what I'm planning. So just have an idea of what acute pain can be. Because moving on, not meaning that it's a more complex or less complex, chronic pain, Chronic pain can show up in various forms, headaches, lower back pain, knee pain, and et cetera. It's with a diverse triggering uh, factors, sometimes no apparent cause. In other words, chronic pain can originate from a variety of sources, physical injuries, stressful life situations, or even without any apparent cause to the patient, to the family, to the professional, to the physician, to the psychologist evaluating this clinical case. Chronic pain is a persistent discomfort that lasts for an extended period, typically beyond three to six months. And it can be due to arthritis, nerve issues. And unfortunately, it affects the daily life requiring multiple management approaches. Some patients may present with a history of chronic pain for decades. And there after two, Two decades, 21 years or so, they, they, they request medical care. It is an unfortunate fact. I've seen this in the emergency department. I've seen this in the pain clinic. 
it is not a rare situation. Again, again, in such cases, regardless of the chronicity or timeline of the pain history, the pain rating score may range from one to 10. Patient with a headache, with low back pain, I cannot know if it's a one or it's a 10. And it is influenced by multiple individual patient factors. So now, so now that we have an understanding of the history of word pain, the current definition, the numeric rating score from zero to 10, what acute and chronic pain is, now we can talk about what subjective and objective data is. So while objective data is all about facts that we can prove and are not affected by what someone believes, it's, it's, it's that data that we can measure, that we can count. Primary care physicians, cardiologists can measure your heart rate, your blood pressure. They can obtain an echogram. They can get an EKG to evaluate your heart. Pulmonologists can evaluate pulmonary, uh, pulmonary function tests. They can get an X-ray. Endocrinologists can measure your glucose, can get some blood tests, can measure all sorts of hormones. Infectious disease doctors, they can get blood cultures, they can get viral loads, they can get imaging to rule out an infection. But we pain physicians, we do not have an objective measurement. We rely on the patient. We rely on the pain rating score that the patient provides, not that he provides on the first visit or the second visit or on the third visit. It is multiple visits that are required to get an idea of the pain experience. And one of those data points, data measurements is the pain measurement that the patient reports. And that's why it's very important. Sometimes I may ask what the pain score is and the patient may just say a number without even thinking or analyzing. I am hoping on all the time that they analyze how their pain is since their pain has been present for months, for years. So the main objective here is to hopefully spark interest in to evaluate the pain of patients, either if it's in the chronic scenario, acute and chronic scenario, or if you get to fall with an unfortunate cause of visiting the emergency department. So moving on, what are the challenges? Why is it so challenging for patients to measure their pain? I understand, I don't ignore that fact. I will give you a second to evaluate your pain rating. Give you a few moments, it's not that easy. Maybe you have a number in mind. Maybe you have a number in mind that you've said before, that you always say. You always say a seven, so it's a seven. It's always a five, so it's always a five. Or maybe it's always a 10. Reanalyze, recalibrate the pain level. I understand it's not easy. Anyhow, there are multiple reasons why the pain is not simple. It's a subjective measure, like I said in the previous slides. Feeling pain differently is personal and it can be very different for each person. We all have our own way of handling and talking about it. It's not an easy measurement. Unlike heart rate or blood pressure, we, we cannot use machines to measure pain. We have to rely on what people tell us, which makes it very personal. Pain has many sides. It's very complex. It's not just physical. Pain can be multidimensional. It involves sensory, emotional, cognitive aspects. It may be challenging to accurately convey the full extent of pain with a single rating. I understand. I understand that one single rating is, is, is not, it's not enough, but it is important to document, to measure, to know, to recalibrate, to reanalyze. So don't, don't disregard that number that you provide to your health professional. It is an important number, not only in the clinical setting, but also in the setting of research to 
to develop new technologies that will help you and other patients. Pain changes is not continuum. It's not the same all the time. Sometimes the pain is strong. Sometimes it's, it's a little bit weaker. It's tricky to give the same rating all the time. I know. And it it's also creates an emotional impact on top of all these problems rating your, your pain. Pain can make people feel upset. Sometimes they may worry. There is also a communication barrier. Sometimes people have a hard time putting words on it. I know it's very difficult. And sometimes patients are even fearful of over-treatment or under-treatment. They may say that their pain is a one or two just because they are afraid of needles or they don't want to take any medications. Or they may say that it's a 10, 10 out of 10 because they don't want anything else because they they, they, they're looking for everything. So they, they believe that saying 10 out of 10 is gonna bring them a magical treatment. We are interested in knowing the pain score, but we are very interested on how it changes. If you, if you tell me it's a five out of 10, I'm interested if it changed from a five to a four or a nine to a one or a two to a zero, I'm interested on in the change. But I'm also interested in the single initial visit pain score that you may provide. So now, I'm sorry if this is a photo that may, that may be a, 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 a little bit disruptive. I apologize. Just to let you know, this patient did excellent. He did great before you dig into the complexity of the photograph, he, he did great. Um, anyhow, this is a, an acute clinical presentation where his pain rating you know, was also unmeasurable. I had to talk to the patient, uh, see him, uh, listen to him. It was not just a number because if I just believe the number, then I'll be completely wrong. We are not computers, we are humans. Patient had minimal pain. Patient said he was, he had no pain, which I understand, maybe he had no pain. But the main reason why he was describing this is because he was afraid of what was gonna happen. He was concerned. He was afraid of what I was going to do next. He didn't want an IV line. He was fearful of getting overly sedated. So he was saying he wanted to be awake during the procedure of taking care of him. So I had to really guide him and talk to him about, you know, really treat his pain and approach, for, and, and approach his care because otherwise he would be uh, blinded. After a, a discussion, he admitted that he was in pain and he, he was happy to, to get some medication without any, uh, any major sedation. And an interesting fact as well, he, he had his, his uh, co-workers next to him and he didn't want to appear weak. So he was claiming that he was not in pain. Anyways, a complex, complex, even though it's, it may be simple, you still have to really analyze and, and talk to the patient. And you may ask yourself why I'm bringing this up. But I believe that if you understand the importance of how we evaluate your pain, then you can provide us with a more reliable subjective measure, which is your pain rating score. Another clinical presentation. This is just one example. So many, unfortunately, that have been evaluated in the emergency department. In this example, say person with chest pain, patient has been having it for a couple of weeks, but somehow the patient is more intense or has been persistent. But at the same time, the patient may be in denial. Patient may be in denial because he does, he's afraid of having a heart attack. And he may state that his he may state that he is he's not even having pain. 
he may state that it's only a sensation. But in fact, he's having pain and he's just afraid of admitting that he's having pain, or she in this case. In this case, it was a he though. Uh, so we really need to talk to the patient and, and evaluate that, that subjective measure, that number of how bad the pain is. Even though we evaluate other aspects such as getting blood pressure, heart rate, getting an EKG, a chest X-ray, see if the patient is sweating, see if the patient has, is having other symptoms. Uh, you, that pain rating score is still important because if he or she states that the pain is zero, then it makes it very complicated. Heart attack by definition must have some pain. I've had patients with two out of 10 chest pain with heart attacks and others with nine out of 10 without heart attacks. In essence, multiple factors must be considered when we evaluate the measurement of pain. This is not, it's not just the EKG or the laboratory markers, but the patient themselves when having a human to human conversation. So I'm presenting you some acute clinical settings. Right? In the setting of acute pain, we do not have the luxury of having a discussion of proper rating scores of pain. However, in chronic pain, we do have that option. We can have that discussion. We can, you, you right now have the opportunity of recalibrating your pain, are able to, to be more familiar with, with how we assess pain, with how important is a, is a rating measurement. Patients with chronic pain may unfortunately have flares of pain Therefore, having episodes of acute and chronic pain can, is also a possibility. When someone is in intense sudden pain, there isn't always enough time to talk about the exact numbers or how about the pain is. But when the pain is ongoing for a long time, like in chronic cases, we can take that time to discuss it properly. People with chronic pain might sadly experience periods when the pain suddenly gets much worse, and this is called acute and chronic pain, just like I mentioned. In this colorful rating score with numbers, with words, with multiple drawings, we can see that 10 out of 10 pain is, as, is described as, as bad as it could be. Nothing else matters. A nine, it it's, can bear the pain, unable to do anything. I've had patients with 10 out of 10 pain that cannot say 10 out of 10. They, they simply cannot, it's so bad, they cannot form words. They are just yelling in pain. I've had patients with one out of 10, five out of 10, all type of cases. So by looking at this, this scale, try to calibrate where you are at. Does it sometimes, are you a five? Does it interrupt some of the activities that you have? Or is that six? Is it hard to ignore and you are avoiding usual activities? Or were you a six before and now you are doing some activities that you enjoy and maybe you're a five now. Maybe you are enjoying the music that you would like. You are the only person that can measure your pain. We are just documenting, we are just listening. So take a look at this, this scale. Now, this is some supplemental questions. If you're having trouble deciding where you are at, this is some additional information that can guide you understand how you experience and you can connect the pain and rate it even though it's subjective. When you feel pain, it's not just a simple sensation. It's connected to how you see the world, your emotions, and your personal history. This information can help you make sense of why your pain might feel different from someone else, even if you have both the exact same injury or condition. 
I understand. I've seen it in the clinic. I've seen it in the emergency department. It's different. For, for instance, imagine you and your friend both have a paper cut. Even though the injury is similar, your friend might say it hurts a lot more than you do. And that's understandable. That's because pain isn't just about the physical injury. It's also influenced by your brain processing the information. Factors like your past experiences, your emotions, and even your expectations can play a big role in how you feel and rate your pain. If you had a bad experience with cuts before, your brain might interpret the paper cut as more painful. On the other hand, if you are used to dealing with small injuries, your brain might not send such as a strong pain signal. So when your pain, when, when you rate your pain, it's not just about the injury itself. It's about how your unique brain and body responds to it. Understanding this connection between your experience and your rating can help you communicate your pain effectively. So now, in this model, here I want to connect and associate the psychological, social, and biological aspects that affect your health and how in order to evaluate the pain experience, we must evaluate all these aspects and how I'm hoping you evaluate yourself as well to analyze why your pain is nine out of 10 and not a two out of 10. Why is it a nine right now? Why is it a 10? Why is it an eight? Why is it not a two? Why is your pain not getting better? This means we look at how pain affects your body, your biological being, your feelings and your thoughts, your psychological essence and things around you like work, like family, friends, how you live. To help your overall health and fully assess your pain experience. So now, I go to this slide and it is unfortunate to say, but other living beings are also affected by any psychosocial insult. I need to mention that donkeys are among the most emotional animals in the world. When they experience an insult to any of the aspects of this biopsychosocial model, such as being separated from their partner, because donkeys will select a partner, or when they are isolated for breeding, or when they have a small injury and a, a sprain, a small abrasion, and they experience pain, they will stress out so much that it can affect their health illness. They can develop a syndrome called hyperlipemic syndrome, and it can lead to death. So just like this living being, humans can also be affected and other, other animals, plants as well. And in this slide, I, I want to explain how we see your pain, how we assess your pain. Unfortunately, we do not have a reliable quantitative measurement. So we need to rely on the full multimodal assessment of your pain experience. In figure A, we are looking 
at a three-dimensional view. Three-dimensional view. We cannot see the inside. We cannot see the core. We cannot see how, how you're feeling your pain. We cannot measure it. And this diagram explains the wide range and importance of different parts that make up the pain experience. It shows us that pain is more than just a simple thing. It's made up of different aspects that come together to shape how a person feels and experiences pain. And then in figure B, we can see a two-dimensional slice that shows the different parts of pain assessment from multiple angles. Looking at it from both the person experience, experiencing the pain and from an outside perspective. This helps us understand that a person's experience of pain is affected by everything about them, including the surroundings and how they interact with various methods we use to study and manage pain. Normally, I share this information with fellow healthcare professionals, but I believe it's important for patients to also know how we assess pain. This helps them grasp that while we don't look at pain in just one way, their personal experience is a crucial part we always take into account. It's like building a puzzle. We consider many pieces in the experience. It's an important piece we never ignore. Now in the upcoming slides, I will give you a quick overview of different scales that can help you when your pain doctor evaluates you, checks on your pain again, even though we consider many ways to understand your pain, that pain measurement is important. So the next slides might help you reanalyze, recalibrate that measurement. Here we have some of the scales that we already discussed, the visual uh, scale, the numeric scale, the analog scale, where you mark the line maybe you, can, you might encounter this. So keep that in mind. But then we have other questionnaires that have been developed in order to understand the pain experience. The McGill pain questionnaire, which is available online, is a tool that developed, was developed since the 1970s. It's used mainly for research, but also for clinical, clinical data. On this scale, you can see how it digs in to, for, to help you describe your pain. And then on the brief pain inventory, let me see, it's not moving. On the brief pain inventory, here we can see multiple questions that assess how pain interferes in the lives of pain sufferers. We can see multiple points. Uh, it, it's, it, it's about a 15 questions in the short version, but the original version is 32 questions. Maybe you have time to fill this at home. Maybe you have already done it. Maybe you've done it once or twice, but maybe this can help you recalibrate your grading score. And on this score, this instrument, the Oswestry Disability Index, is a questionnaire that since been in existence in the 1980s, it's mainly to evaluate the ability of a patient performing everyday activities. It also provides some insight into the impact of pain on various aspects of life, such as walking, standing, or sleeping. And I know it may be overwhelming uh, to do these uh, questionnaires, but I think your pain is important. 
and this needs to be re-evaluated re multiple times. There's also the pain catastrophizing scale or the pain coping scale. And this, is, this assesses how much a person tends to amplify, dwell on, or feel overwhelmed by their pain experience. And then on this next one, it is the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. This is a tool used to evaluate the quality of a person's sleep and identify potential sleep-related issues over a month time frame. This may help you and your doctors figure out if someone might have sleep issues and how to help them sleep better. So in conclusion, I am hoping that after discussing pain as a three-dimensional experience, the importance of a psychosocial aspect, the numeric scales and the pain measuring instruments, that all those can help you recalibrate and analyze your pain measurement. Here is the list of the instruments that we discussed, briefly discussed. And in summary, I hope the definition of pain, even though it's so complex, the current definition, please note that this is an ongoing definition. It may be, it may change. It may change in, in a couple of decades or a century. We discuss the challenges of rating your pain. And my hope is that maybe I have sparked some interest in you to reevaluate your pain rating, for you to analyze it and understands the significance of not just rating your pain, but also looking at the scales to help you gauge your experience of pain.